Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Shark Spartan GT Pro and Spartan GT Pro Carbon. Covering two helmets here, the Spartan GT Pro and also the Spartan GT Pro Carbon. Now the idea of this helmet isn't all new, the Spartan GT has been around since 2020 and we've already reviewed that lid. But these Pro versions are upgraded helmets that have got better linings, anti-fog coated sun visors and are approved to the new ECE 2206 safety standard. So I'll quickly cover off the differences between the GT Pro and the GT Pro Carbon before I get too far into things. This is a Spartan GT Pro. It's got a fiberglass shell with a decorative carbon fiber trim that shows at each side of the helmet. This size medium weighs 1528 grams on our scales and the list price as we record this is 429.99 for planes going up to 459.99 for graphics. This is a GT Pro Carbon. The shell is made from a composite of fibers including a decent dose of carbon fiber within the mix and a lot of that carbon fiber is on show. This lid, another size medium, weighs 1470 grams on our scales and the list price ranges from 479.99 to 509.99. So this helmet is about 60 grams lighter than this one and it costs about 50 quid more. But if previous form is anything to go by, more people will buy this lid, the carbon. So that's the one we've used for this review. Apart from the shell construction, there's no real difference between the two models. So let's get into the key facts about this one here. Right, so this is the GT Pro Carbon. Venting on this helmet comes from inlets at the chin and also on top. The chin vent brings air up through the chin bar and onto the visor, and I found it surprisingly effective. I didn't really expect much from that chin vent when I was looking at the route for the air to travel through, but opening it brought up a good amount of air into the eye port. There are also inlet and exhaust vents on top. The two inlet holes are behind this sliding shutter here, and the two exhaust holes are exposed if you slide down this switch just here. There are channels within the UPS impact liner that let the air circulate from front to back and then escape through that exhaust vent. As with the chin vent, I found the top one quite effective as well. I wore this helmet mostly in winter conditions and I could very much feel the air flowing inside. Moving on to the visor, this is a strong point of premium shark helmets like this. They're thicker than most visors and they give really good optical clarity. It lifts and lowers with a central tab just here. And there are loads of steps from top to bottom. You can also increase the resistance on the mechanism to make it more likely to stay in an intermediate position. If you leave the tab resting against the chin bar, you get a good cracked position to allow in a small amount of air at low speeds and then pushing it down just locks the visor in place. To release it, you need to push this lever just underneath to free that lock. The visor is easy to change and it comes with a pin lock insert in the box to protect against mist. It's a pin lock 120, which is the highest grade, and that's an improvement over the pin lock 70 that came with the previous model of this helmet. The sun visor behind that has an anti fog coating, which in my opinion is another improvement over the old Spartan GT helmet. That coating's not perfect. It did mist a little when I first set off on a cold, damp morning, but it was fine once I've been riding for about 10 minutes and it's definitely better than having no fog protection at all. The sun visor runs from this switch on top of the lid, and it's got a good amount of drop as well as protection from glare. Right, let's move inside. The lining for this lid is soft and it's comfortable and it's covered with a material that will be really good for staying cool in summer. It's all removable, although you need to take care with it as the press studs that secure the cheek pads in sharks helmets like this one are a bit different to most others. You can't just tear the padding out well, you can, but if you do that, they probably won't go back in properly afterwards. So I would check the manual for how to remove them without damaging the housings that hold them inside the lid. There are channels at the top of the cheek pads that let you fit spectacles in there comfortably and there are emergency release cheek pads as well. So that's one scenario where the cheek pads do just get ripped out without much care. But fitting cheek pads back in again will be the least of your worries if you ever reach that point. The helmet fastens with D-rings. The first generation of Spartan GT had D-rings. Then Shark changed to a micrometric slider. But now the GT Pro and Pro Carbon have both gone back to D-rings, which I think is more in keeping with a sporty helmet like this. There are recesses behind the liner that give room for intercom speakers. They are big enough for most speakers, even the 40mm ones that come with premium Cardo units. There's an official shark intercom, the shark tooth. This helmet's prepared for that with the cavity at the back of the neck for the battery. And then you get a slim control module that sticks to the shell. That shark tooth unit uses quite old Senna tech now. 
It suits connecting to your phone, but other than that, really, it's a bit behind the times. The good thing with shark lids like this, though, is you can quite easily fit your own choice of intercom. There are no clips on the side to get in the way, like you get on a growing number of helmets, and you don't even have to avoid the switch for the sun visor because on this helmet, it's on top of the lid, it's not in the way. The lining to this helmet does fit quite snugly, so it's a bit fiddly to fit an intercom, but once they're in, this is one of the easier lids for using your own choice of unit. So let's cover off sizing and approvals. Sizes range from extra small to double extra large, and there are two shell sizes. Lid sizes up to and including medium go in the smaller shell, and then helmet sizes large and above go in the bigger shell. In terms of approvals, this helmet meets the latest ECE 2206 certification for road riding. Now, Shark tell us there's no fundamental difference in terms of protection between this 2206 helmet and the previous model, which was approved to the older 2205 standard. But having that latest approval does give some reassurance that this helmet is right up there in terms of its safety performance. There's no rating from the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Program for this helmet as we record this. We'll add it to the description below when or if one is published. The previous Spartan GT and GT Carbon, though, both scored four stars in Sharp, and if Shark say there's no fundamental difference between the helmets, then I would expect the same for both this helmet and also for the fiberglass version. If you intend to ride on track, you'll be pleased to see that the ACU gold sticker on the back means you'll be allowed to wear this for racing and track days. Right, overall, I think this helmet is a good upgrade over what's gone before. I liked the previous Spartan GT Carbon for its long distance comfort and also its good vision. This is a better helmet thanks to the improved pinlock insert and also the anti-fog coating on the sun visor. Comfort lining's improved as well, and the ECE 2206 rating does give a bit of extra reassurance in the safety standards. If it suits your head shape as well as it does mine, then I think this is a very good helmet for the money. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark Spartan GT Pro Carbon and also the Shark Spartan GT Pro. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.